All right, what's up, Hot Squad? This is man, Taurus Hot back here too, but welcome back to another daily dose of Hot Banger reactions. So I'm catching up on all my Hot Bangers I missed out on. I have been doing it two days in a row, and this is the third day. So hey, three days in a row, right? Right. So I still got three recaps I want to get through today. So I'm gonna get straight to them. So Hot Squad, we're going to check out Zephyr's recap of Spider Man. That's right, Spider Man One. Oh boy, the one that started it all. So this one is called Spider Man One is Peak Cinema. So yes, Hot Squad, it's true. It's, it's absolutely true because. I remember the first Spider-Man came out back in 2002, and I was really, I was such a huge fan. That no, first things first. This movie got me into superhero movies. No, no, no lie, no lie at all, no cap. So yes, <laughs> this movie, the, the Spider-Man, first Spider-Man, actually got me into superhero movies. Period. Way before the first Blade and the first X-Men, Spider-Man One got me into superhero movies to this day. And I freaking love it. It's such a classic, such a damn classic, man. So it's gonna feel so nostalgic seeing the, seeing a bunch of clips of the first Spider-Man game because I remember seeing this first time when I was a kid. I was like, oh my god, it was such a huge packed theater. I'm not so sure it was IMAX, but I know it was in Virginia. No, actually, no. I think it was in Cinemark. That's right, one of the Cinemarks down in um in Norfolk, I believe. I watched it when I was young, and man, I watched it multiple times. I remember I watched the DVD so much. When I first got in it, at least every single day, a week, it was like, I just had such addition to Spider-Man 1 so much. So that's why I love the character himself to this day. So, Hot Squad, what we're going to do, we're going to check out Zephyr's Spider-Man recap right now. Continuing on with more Hot Vega recaps right after this. So, Hot Squad, what we're going to do, let's check it out. It's about to go down. Hit it, hit it, hit it, hit it, get it, get it, get it, get it. Get it. He's like Mary Jane, and then he gets sniped by a rock. <laughs> a rock. <laughs> this is a rock. Seriously. The Sam Raimi Spider-Man movies are constantly gassed up, and it's for good reason. Yeah. These movies are some absolute classics. Yes. These movies actually feel like you're watching a comic book due to the direction, the vibe of the movie as a whole, and the way the characters are written. And there are so many reasons that's why so many people, including me, love them so much. Yep. And I'm gonna get into why I love them. Now, I'm gonna be talking about mainly Spider-Man 1 in this video. I'm gonna get into Spider-Man 3 in another video because the, my opinions on Spider-Man 3... <laughs> Yeah, lay ready. But first, oh, by the way, I actually did that one earlier this year. Go check that one out. This one, that one's hilarious. I'm gonna have to fry these movies just so you guys don't think I'm a complete and utter meat writer. Yes. These movies do have flaws, and yeah. I'm gonna go make fun of them in a satire way. So don't go in the comments crying that these aren't legitimate. I don't care. Yes. <laughs> First, we gotta talk about Peter Parker. This man's drip is absolutely <laughs> atrocious. Yeah, I get that college depth is bad. People are literally paying to put themselves in 100K plus depth for years on end. But there's no way you should have two outfits in your entire college. Now, I know you guys are gonna be like, oh, he doesn't actually have two outfits. It's the thematic themes of the shut up. Bro. Not only that, he has absolutely no riz whatsoever. MJ gave him the freest alley oop of all time. What does this man say? Unsalvageable riz. His girl got stolen by someone else. What does this man say to her? Oh my god. Who can save him? Because this is not the same Spider-Man that was pulling 10 after 10 after 10 in the comics, man. And I don't know if it's just me, but he always looked like he crying when he's talking to Mary Jane. Either that or he's actually crying. Like he's such a dork, it actually hurts my eyes watching him on the screen sometimes. And not only that, this Spider-Man has probably the worst one-liners I have ever heard in my entire life. Entire freaking life. It's you who's out, Gabby. <laughs> like, what was my man's cooking with some of these, man? This man <laughs> oh, be sitting in his room like this 24 7. You can't think of better one liners than this? You kidding? I got Nickelodeon TV shows that got better one liners <laughs> than this clown. Who gave them to you? Yo mama. And another thing that really bothers me about these movies, we gotta talk about the civilians. I don't know if Sam Raimi just had a hate for New York people, but some of the people in these movies are unrealistically mean. Yes, yeah, fires. There's so, there's no damn reason that they was so mean to freaking Peter, man. That's crazy. But yeah, um, I remember the controversy that Tom McGuire was gonna be Peter Parker slash Spider-Man, and he absolutely killed it. He killed it. Greatest Spider-Man ever. Peter over a 29 minute delivery. In New York City? Have you drove there? Bro was a minute late to talking about some 
I'm not paying for these. Bro, I would have clocked her. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie, these guys are almost as bad as the people with the bikini bottom. And you got the dude that's right in front of the play, man. Don't even get me started on this fraud. You know, when I'm first watching this movie, he's telling Peter, yo, you know, you gotta fix up your outfit. You gotta tie your shoe, you gotta fix up your tie. And I'm looking at him, I'm like, yo, he's really putting his hand out for a brother, man. He's a nice guy. Peter walk up to the front, just for him to be like, yeah, nah, you're not seeing this. Bro had the audacity to be nice, just to completely and utterly roast Peter afterwards. This is the reason why Peter Parker is Spider-Man. Because if that was me, I would have done him like a Gotham thug. Don't ever talk to me like that. Do you know who I am? But other than that, though, this cameo's um, cameos is and the Spider-Man trilogy. That's just pretty hilarious, though. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, these movies are really fire. Yeah, they are some of the best written superhero movies ever when they want to be. All these movies have some great themes and they understand their character Spider-Man very well. Spider-Man is a very relatable character, so literally every single theme that he goes through, you can apply into your real life and you'll be 10 times of a better person. <laughs> so watching these movies really be motivated, I'm not gonna lie. And not only that, these are straight comedies. Like, I remember when Cosmonaut said this, everybody was really mad at him, but if you actually watch these movies, bro, they are actually the funniest thing alive. Yeah. You can play so Don't many scenes out of context, and I guarantee you, you're gonna start laughing, bro. Oh! <laughs> yeah. Cool One of my favorite it. scenes I'm gonna break down, scene for scene, part for part, is the festival in Spider-Man 1. There's multiple reasons why this scene is so good. Green Goblin, who honestly needs his own video because he is such <laughs> a menace, I yes. don't know how they even put him yes. on the screen. Spider-Man himself, and most importantly, this scene is just absolutely hilarious. <laughs> it's gotta be everything that I ever love about these movies. Impressive. Right? Right now. So it starts off, you know what I'm saying, with the festival. Peter's going around taking pictures and he sees Harry all over his girl. He gets tight. I don't know what Sammy's <laughs> obsession is about Peter Parker taking pictures of himself literally getting cucked. What would be happening too much to this man? The Daily Bugle does not pay him enough to go through that much emotional turmoil. You know, everything's going good and you just see this nigga from a distance. On some Saturday morning cartoon <laughs> shit, bro. Every time I see this, I just start dying of laughter, bro. Because you anybody remember Singular Wireless though? That's crazy. You know Norman was plotting this from. <laughs> Just thinking about it, got me laughing, bro. You know he was plotting this from the moment he hopped on that glider, bro. So he starts flying. He goes there very slowly like he's Santa Claus or something. But he ain't delivering no presents. This nigga's delivering death. Plays no games and just completely blows up an entire balcony. And Peter, instead of going at it the moment he saw that happen, what does he do? He stands there like he's in a headache. Like, bro, I get it. You look hard here, but you got a job, nigga. <laughs> you know, Peter's still standing there, and Green Goblin's out here collecting his bodies, literally vaporizing people yeah. into skeletons uh, and everything around. That scene was brutal when he vaporized those men. That was brutal. Around them getting destroyed, people are screaming and running away, and that's when Peter decides to put on the suit. Like, this nigga really think he's Superman <laughs> right here, bro. Look at him. <laughs> no originality whatsoever. My man's was cooking though, I'm not gonna lie. This shot is hard. And you got Mary Jane at the edge of the balcony screaming her lungs out. And you know, people be saying that Sam Raimi loves screaming women. I love <laughs> screaming women too, just in a different context. But once you realize that he likes it, you see just how much he abuses it throughout these movies. When it's time to build suspense in a movie, a woman will scream. When some action is about to go down, a woman will scream. Yeah. When the most <laughs> no, simple, mundane task is about to happen. You get your rent when you fix this damn door. I wouldn't be surprised if you counted the amount of screens within each of these movies yeah. and surpass 100. Because it happens so much. Yeah. But you know, you got Mary Jane screaming her lungs out. And then Harry's out here thinking he's the whole savior. Trying to be Kent just to get some box. She's not going to let you in. <laughs> he's like, Mary Jane! And then he gets sniped by a rock. rock. Yeah. A rock! And he's laid out. That's all we get from him from this entire <laughs> scene. He's gone. This is the same dude later on that thinks he's gonna kill Spider-Man. Like, once I saw this scene, I knew I couldn't take him seriously. Yeah. So Mary Jane's still screaming, and then we got Mr. Rizzler right here. And I'm gonna pause the clip, and I'm gonna allow y'all to get your notebooks out, because y'all need to take some notes. This is how you pull any woman you want. She got Green Goblin rising from his glider, you know what I'm saying? Music. Giving her a nice, seductive look. Like, he's ready to just devour her. <laughs> and Mary Jane looked to her side. All he sees is him. What did he say? Hello, my dear. Riz was so good, she started screaming. Take notes. You saw the head movement when he said that too? Woman loved the energy, bro. This was truly a Hall of Fame performance by Mr. Osborne right here. I'm gonna let that scene rock because this whole scene in the play-by-play -play is absolutely hilarious. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah. Hello, my dear. It's Spider-Man! Uh -huh. 
absolute masterpiece. So Spider-Man knocks him out, and then he has to waste his time saving this absolute idiot of a child. Yes, oh my God. He sees a direct threat my on God. his life, and he just stands there staring at him. Seriously, yo. Is another reason why I can't be a superhero, because if that was me, I would have let that nigga become flat standing. <laughs> Man, clap it up, bro. Give us a nigga award for the biggest bozo of all Seriously. time. But, uh, you know. I hate when movies do that crap to kids, like... When a dangerous situation goes, the kid just stand there, get re just ready to die, you don't know where to go. I hate that. I hate that in movies, man. Spider-Man saves him, gives him back to his mom, and then you see Green Goblin come out the balloons with the most fire entrance ever. I'm telling you, Green Goblin was really him. The police pull up on him with guns, talking about some freeze. And if you've seen superhero movies, you know they're about to get dropped. But the way it goes about is mad funny, because look what Green Goblin does. I surrender. I surrender. <laughs> oh, boy. This is why I love this man, bro. Absolute troll. So he proceeds to drop every single one of these police officers. And then Spider-Man comes out and he's going to do something. He blocks it. Straight up, it proceeds Dude, to hit this nigga with a full power that sends him flying across the entire festival and literally oh, injures damn. an entire civilian. Like, I'm pretty sure that nigga's dead, bro. Yeah. And even if he lived, look where <laughs> it hit him. He's never walking right again. You know what I'm saying, that's... <laughs> and then, I don't know, this scene just starts going out of nowhere. Green Goblin and Spider-Man stop playing Subway <laughs> Surfers. <laughs> and I know y'all see that dumpy that nigga got. Stop. And then Spider-Man remembers he only does the hero guy, stuff bro. to get women. So he goes back to try to save Mary Jane. See, whenever the hose is around, that's when Spider-Man actually remembers to lock in. It's like there's no woman around. This man forgets that he even has powers. <laughs> because if you look at each and every single one of these movies, Spider-Man only taps in when the hoe is in trouble. In the finale, he was getting beat by Green yeah. Goblin until he said something about his girl. That's when he actually tapped in. That's why every single one of these movie finales have to involve Mary Jane. Because if there's no hoes, this nigga's nothing. I could kill him. You know, jumping on each of the balloons like it's Pokey Floats in Smash Bros. Melee or something. And the moment he gets... Hey, real stuff, man. I'll fight for Christian Dunst as Mary Jane. I'll fight for a real stuff, man. That's, that's that testosterone, man. It's there, Green Goblin slams that nigga to the window, bro. Like, I'm telling you, Goblin can't be stopped, bro. He's him. Spider-Man eventually gets out of it and then webs Green Goblin in the face. And then look what Spider-Man does here just because he's in front of Mary Jane, bro. All he had to do was punch the glider and the same result was going to happen. Well, no, what does this nigga do? He does a whole flip just to reach up. All because the hose is watching. I'm telling you, Peter Parker's at L. Mays. You got to watch this nigga at all costs. And the scene ends with the most... Cartoon exit ever with him saying, Spider-Man. Classic. And then Mary yeah. Jane finally falls. Like, damn, I was waiting for her to. And you get the yes. fakest Spider-Man fall ever. Every time I see this, I start laughing. I'm literally yes. about to laugh right now. <laughs> Gets me crying. <laughs> but he saves Mary Jane. And instead of letting her down where all the regular people are, uh -oh. Spider-Man starts swinging her around the whole city. Again, look at how niggas change once the holes appear. <laughs> and he did all that around the city just for him to get on top of the building. What does he do? Vanish. Yep. Absolutely no riz whatsoever. <laughs> But this scene is fantastic. Every single time I watch Spider-Man 1, this scene has me absolutely crying. There is so much more that I love about this movie and Spider-Man 2 as well. Mm -hmm. But if I keep going, this video about to be like, I don't even know how long. But yeah, Spider-Man 1 is a complete classic. Everything yep. about this movie is absolutely fantastic. The final fight is one of my personal favorite superhero fights ever. I don't know what it is about Peter Parker with that messed up mask, but that nigga just looks so sexy. No pause and no no home. I mean it fully. I would kiss this nigga if oh, I had nah. to. But that whole fight was absolutely fantastic. They were both going hit for hit, blow yeah. for blow. They was really putting work in on each other. But definitely peep these movies if you haven't. They are absolutely amazing. Let me know what y'all think about them. I'm definitely going to have to make a video on Spider-Man 2 and 3, especially 3, because that got to be one of the best movies of all time. But y'all ain't ready for that take. But thank y'all so much for watching. I'm going to catch y'all in the next one. All right, nice, awesome recap. Was that fine? Yeah, man, he's right. First Spider-Man is absolute classic. The first two Spider-Man man movies, excuse me, are absolute classics, man. Like, God damn, man. It feels so nostalgic watching watching these, man. It feels so damn nostalgic. But yeah, I actually did his Spider-Man three recap earlier this year ago. Please check that one out. That one's is that was freaking hilarious. That was hilarious. I'm not just sure if I actually saw his Spider-Man two one, but I have to see. I did so much his recaps. It's crazy. So I'm. 
trying to see if I actually did spam into him. I might do that one if he actually did post it. So overall, yes, yes, Hot Squad. This was a W recap from Zephyr. Keep up the great work, buddy. So Hot Squad, that is my conclusion of my reaction to Zephyr Spider-Man One recap. So if you enjoyed this, please hit that button, cut share your thoughts. How old were you when you saw the first Spider-Man? How many times you seen it? I believe I was, I think I was four years old when it came up because I was born in '98, so I was like '99, 2000, 20. Yeah, I was I was about four years old when this came out. So yeah, uh, yeah, very nostalgic, very absolutely nostalgic seeing this again, man. So yes, Hot Squad, I'm going to continue my Hot Banger recap marathon. Coming next is Jack Justus IP recap. So Hot Squad, please stay tuned for that. <laughs>